All right, uh, welcome to the 2023 U.S. National Aerobatic Contest. I'm uh, Jeff Granger, and with me is uh, Shell Ballard. Uh, we'll put the old team back together again. I uh, love it when a plan works out. So this is the uh, unknown, uh, the free unknown program number one. Is that correct, Lurie? Uh, this is the highest category, the unlimited, and uh, these pilots are going to be doing a program which was uh, selected from figures that they submitted, which were then combined to make uh, a, a series of similar programs, all based on the same figures. The pilots can then choose which of these sequences to fly, but it's still an unknown program in the sense that they have never flown this, this combination of figures before, which makes it especially difficult. Yeah, very difficult. Uh, Lots of pilots on the ground this morning walking in boxes marked out on the concrete, uh, kind of walking through mentally what they were going to be doing today in the box, in the airplane, thinking about where they're going to position each one of those figures and how it, they can make it look right to the judge. As we speak, we have uh, an extra 330 SC screaming across the box now, showing us the low line, so this allows our judges to see exactly the lowest point at which they should see an airplane flying during this competition uh, and gives them a little bit of perspective so that they're ready to call something uh, low uh, during the actual flight competition. Yeah, the first pilot is uh, Jeff Petricelli. Uh, he's from uh, Long Island, New York. He's the co-owner of Soul Brew Coffee. He also has a popular aviation uh, podcast focused on aerobatics with his uh, friend uh, and partner uh, Mark Pollard. Uh, Jeff was advanced team captain in uh, 2019 and 2022. Uh, he is 2019 advanced power national champion and has now moved up to the unlimited category. And he's uh, flying this uh, gorgeous extra 330 SC, 330 horsepower, carbon fiber uh, wing, uh, German built monoplane. As uh, Kel mentioned, um, he's flying the low lines, you know, what you might call the hard deck. This is the altitude below which they must not go without uh, a penalty. And this is only 330 feet, 100 meters above the ground. The pilots in the unlimited category fly uh, according to SIVA rules uh, in preparation for competing internationally. Uh, SIVA is the, the world organization. Do you speak any French? I don't. I, don't. Uh, I think it, the Committee Internationale de Voltige Ariane. So this is a team selection year for Unlimited. The pilots who place highest in this uh, year's competition here in Salina can go to the next world competition, wherever that might be, and compete against other people in world. Okay, so we've got a pretty strong uh, on box wind, a uh, correction, on judge wind uh, today. Uh, one of the big challenges of flying these uh, unlimited uh, unknowns is that they have to continuously adjust for the wind. If they uh, blow over the top of the judge's heads, not only uh, is it difficult to, for the judge to uh, see what they're doing and judge them appropriately, but uh, it may even uh, uh, result in, in that figure being, uh, being zeroed. Uh, I was judging yesterday and there was a strong wind blowing the advanced competitors over our heads and in uh, the judging criteria and rules we can automatically take two points off when any figure is overhead and difficult to judge. Uh, I'm looking at, uh, let me see which uh, figure, which of the various sequences Jeff Petro is going to fly. He's flying sequence A. I don't know, this makes me dizzy just looking at it. <laughs> I'd like to be able to call this sequence as it goes. It may, uh, get a little, uh, may get a little garbled, but at least I don't have to fly it. Accurate, yeah. Yeah. It's going to start uh, into the wind with uh, what's known as a P loop. So he's going to pull the vertical. Uh, there are some rolls on that vertical line. And then the, uh, the three-quarter loop is a, is a push. Instead of pulling the stick, he's going to have to push the stick and go around in a negative G-load. There's a snap roll at the top of that, and then at the bottom there's an alternating roll combination before it exits back into the wind. Then the second figure is a double humpty, so he's going to pull up, do a, a two of a four-point roll, 
and uh, pull around. There's going to be a three out of a four point roll on the way down. And then coming back up, there's going to be a, a negative snap, three quarter snap. So push the stick and the rudder to get an auto rotation. These are exceptionally difficult to do because you're looking up at the sky and it's very difficult to assess the degree of rotation. Uh, so he's in the box now. Uh, the upper categories, advanced and unlimited, are allowed to do a warm-up figure. Um, this uh, allows them to check their belts, check their inverted fuel and oil system, um, gives them one more, one more look at the box. Uh, I think it also gets uh, some of the adrenaline going into the bloodstream, which uh, helps with your, uh, with your G, G tolerance. tolerance yeah. G tolerance. You're an Air Force flight surgeon, so I you know am. a thing or two about G tolerance. Know a few things about Gs. Ever, did you ever ride in the uh, in the centrifuge? Gosh, I wish I could say I didn't, but I did. I had to demonstrate nine Gs, uh, staying awake uh, while looking over my shoulder and looking ahead, mm. um, in order to, to get qualified in the F-16. Yeah. I see. Uh, I have not had a simulator ride. Uh, I do have an extra 300L, and I've I pulled up to seven Gs in the past in that, but nothing like nine Gs. And uh, do you have a do you have a G suit in the uh, simulator? Do you have a G suit in the centrifuge? Yeah, and also in the aircraft. The biggest difference between the actual aircraft versus the centrifuge is that you also get to have an oxygen mask in the aircraft, and that helmet is actually built to kind of push that oxygen mask into your face, so you get a little bit of force-fed oxygen while you're you're pulling G in the aircraft. Whereas in the centrifuge, you got to breathe on your own. Mm -hmm. Okay, I hear him winding up. He took off uh, to our left, so I'm assuming that the, the inbox wind is from the left. We got a great day here in Salina, except for the wind. It's uh, pretty moderate temperatures, I think low 80s, and uh, really clear skies. I don't know if I prefer clear skies for judging, though. Yeah, it'd be nice to have some clouds in the background, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, this morning's flights, especially uh, very moderate temperatures and uh, and beautiful blue skies above us, it was really nice. So he's up high in the perch, looking at the box. Looks like he's diving in. So notice no wing wags, this will be his warm-up maneuver. So what kind of maneuvers are you allowed to do to warm up? That's a great question, and I don't fly advanced or unlimited, but mm -hmm. uh, we've seen some hammers, we've seen some humpties. I think we saw a, uh, figure, eight. a figure eight, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's pretty much it, it's in the, it's in the rule book. Uh, he took off uh, to the north, which means surface winds must be to the north, but he's, uh, he entered uh, from left to right, so the nominal or down box wind must be from the right. There's that seatbelt check that you and I were talking about a few days ago. Yeah, yeah, the roll inverted and pump the stick a couple times, get the belts uh, nice and stretched out, and then when he circles around, he'll, he'll give the belts, uh, the ratchets on the belts, another, another click or two. Yeah, he's, uh, he's a nice fellow. I got a chance to do some commentary with him earlier in the week complimented him on his uh, his podcast. I'm working as a flight instructor now down in Provo after, after retiring from my surgical career. Mm. And uh, so I got an hour drive down, hour drive back. It's good to have uh, some podcasts to listen to. And his, his aviation podcast is very entertaining. A little bit on the, little bit on the adult side. So he's behind our backs now. You can hear that 330 horsepower Lycoming AEIO 580 engine with its three-bladed carbon fiber composite constant speed prop winding up. I love the extras. Been an extra flyer since 2000. 2000. Yeah, truly beautiful airplanes and airplanes that have demonstrated their capabilities on the uh, the international level as well as the national level. Uh, winning pretty much across the board on the unlimited side, with uh, the MX starting to give them a little bit of a, a run for their money. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the the new U.S. built Game Bird by Game Composites. All right, so he's on. It looks like he's on a base leg into uh, for a right hand turn into the box, 
with the wind from our right. We're using the SEVA Unlimited Program 2 Form B for U.S. Nationals 2023 in Salina, Kansas. Jeff Petrocelli from Long Island, New York, coming into the box. Looks like he's turning in final right now right. and wagging his wings, letting us know he's ready. All right, so that's a signal to the judge that his program is starting. So whatever uh, happens after this is, is considered figure one. Figure one's a P-loop. Three-quarter roll with two out of eight opposite. And then a push around on the, uh, the P-loop with a snap roll at the top. And it's gonna continue to push. It's got an alternating roll combination at the bottom. Three quarter and uh, one and a quarter. And then he's out for figure two. <clears throat> Next is a uh, Humpty Bump. Begins with a two out of four on the up line. And then a pull around. And there'll be uh, three points of a four point roll on the down line. Then pull around on the Humpty and then a negative three-quarter snap on the way up. Okay, he's got a, got a layout inverted to our left. And that ends figure two. Figure three is a, uh, uh, an eight. It begins with a 45 down and a one and a half roll. Then there's gonna be a pull around a three-quarter three-quarter loop on this second diagonal will be a two-point roll now this next loop is a push this is when he hopes its belts are nice and tight at the top, there's a one and a half roll with a negative one and a half snap opposite. And that finishes figure three. Next is a Humpty Bump. He's gonna pull the vertical with a quarter roll. Then uh, it's a positive, a pull around. And another quarter roll, which brings him out to our right. Figure five on the upwind side of the box is a hammerhead, and on the up line there's a one and a quarter roll. The judges are looking for him to pivot within his wingspan. On the down line is a one roll, and he'll be out on the Y axis, coming either to, toward us or away from us. Figure six is another P-loop. The roll combination is a half roll and a quarter roll opposite. Then there's a pull around with a snap roll, sometimes known as an avalanche. Then at the bottom, there's alternating two point and four point rolls. Figure seven is another Humpty Bump. This one has a quarter roll on the up line and a pull around. Remember, he's trying to do this all within a 1,000 meter square airspace. Quarter roll on the down line and out to our left. And it looks like he's gone quite a bit to the south, so he needs to cross the box to get ready for his tail slide, figure eight. So this begins with a two point roll. Now he's has to slide backwards and uh, uh, flop with his wheels up. Then a two out of four roll on the way down and exit stage right. Figure nine is a diagonal Humpty. The four point roll on the way up and then a push around Back to the diagonal with a half snap. 
and out to our left. Figure 10 is a half loop, starts with a half, with a roll and a half roll opposite, and then a push around. And then a two out of four, four out of eight alternate. Eleven is another double humpty with a quarter roll on the way up, a pull around. Nothing on the down line. Another pull around and a half roll. And then out upright. Next is a push down to a P loop, three quarter roll. And a push around, this has to go into the wind, which he, which he is. And then at the top, a two out of eight and a three quarter opposite. Figure 13 is uh, just a simple half loop down. 14 has got a four out of two with a double roll opposite. And a pull around half loop up. A three out of two and a negative snap, same direction. All right, and he is done. Probably feels like he's been through the industrial size uh, washer washing machine at this point. Huh? Quite sure that he feels like he just went through the ringer, but he's doing quite well. Uh, yeah, he did end up uh, getting blown uh, over the judge's head there toward the end. So that was the A sequence that you just saw flown by Jeff Petricelli. Uh, the next sequence you see will be just ever so slightly different, uh, which is the C sequence uh, flown by Craig Gifford. Uh, you know, something we talked about the other day were G-forces being experienced by these pilots while they're flying. Uh, and a question, Jeff, that you just asked was about a G-suit like I wore in the centrifuge and also in the F-16. The, uh, the G-suit basically inflates bags of air around areas in your legs where blood tends to pool, and so it helps keep a little bit of blood in circulation in your torso and allows you to kind of force it up into your head. The pilots fly that you're seeing flying today are not wearing G-suits. Uh, there's a few reasons for that. One is that uh, you don't have all the extra weight of the equipment required to support that life-sustaining equipment uh, inside the aircraft. The other thing, though, is that even though these aircraft are incredibly powerful, uh, 330 plus horsepower, uh, they don't have enough thrust to maintain those Gs for long periods of time. So it's a very quick onset, but then that G tends to bleed off as airspeed tends to bleed off. So these airplanes are actually designed to speed up very, very quickly and then slow down very quickly for a lot of these figures that they're flying as opposed to like a 48,000 uh, pound of thrust F-16 or something like that of that sort, that could maintain 9G until it runs out of fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and in combat maneuvering, you may have to do eight or nine Gs for 30 or 40 seconds at a time. Correct, correct. Right. And be able to demonstrate your ability to do so and maintain your ability to do so. Okay. All right, so coming in for his uh, warm-up maneuvers is Craig Gifford. Craig's a banker from uh, the Minneapolis area. He was on the uh, 2014 advanced team in Slovakia, uh, the 2017 world team in uh, South Africa, the 2019 uh, world team in uh, Chateau Roux, France, and the 2022 world team in uh, Lesno, Poland. Uh, he's been flying most of his adult life and has over 4,500 hours and dozens of different types of uh, aircraft. Has won uh, numerous uh, flight medals. He's been a member of the IAC since 2007 and is on the U.S. Unlimited team. What's he doing for his warm-up figure? I think it was a Humpty, but it went by rather quickly. Yeah, so if uh, any of you are interested in learning how to read these aerobatic figures, you can go to the IAC.org, our uh, re recently updated website, and you can find educational material there. You can also recommend uh, some textbooks, such as uh, Michael Goulian and uh, Giza Sorovny's uh, book on basic aerobatics has a nice tutorial on uh, the, uh, the arresting figures.
So these see, these uh, um, they're not flying an air show routine. They're not flying a, a gee whiz, hey, wow, look what I can do, a uh, series of uh, unique um, maneuvers. They're flying a specific sequence of uh, figures which are in, in a catalog and uh, have a, a number and a degree of difficulty. And they're represented by a graphical notation system that was developed in the 1930s by a Spaniard by the name of Colonel Jose Aresti. The great thing about it is um, it's a universal language. You could give this sequence to the French or the Russians and they could read it, even though we might necessar not necessarily speak the actual same language as them. Agreed, and it also makes judging uh, standardized so that everything's based on lines, angles, the shape of the figure from the ground, adjusted for wind. Now on uh, Friday, we are going to have some freestyles. We will, and you'll see some tumbling and some other things that you don't see in some of these other okay. sequences. All right, here he comes. So his uh, first uh, figure is uh, looks like the same as uh, Jeff's first figure. It's a pull to vertical to go into a P loop with a three quarter followed by a two out of eight, and then a push around uh, P loop with a avalanche uh, as snap roll that is on the top, and then a push around again with. Uh, a three quarter and uh, a, a one and three quarter and one and a quarter opposite. Okay, figure two is a double humpty. So he's going to pull up and do a two out of four. And then a pull around. Hard to see him up in the sun. And uh, then a three out of four on the way down. And when he does, comes up, pulls around on the third line, he's going to do a three-quarter roll, and he's going to finish out inverted to our left. That finishes figure two. Figure three is the eight. So on the diagonal line, there's a one-and-a-half roll. That puts him upright again, so he can pull around on his three-quarter loop. On this uh, next diagonal, there's a two-point roll. Okay. And then he has to push around on this next loop, this five-eighths loop. Then a one-and-a-half roll with a one-and-a-half outside snap opposite. And that finishes that figure. Figure four is a double humpty. On the first vertical line, there's a quarter roll. Then this is a pull around. A half roll on the way down. Then another pull around. Another half roll. And he's going to cap off upright, coming towards the judges. On figure five, he has to push down. Three quarter roll. Then a push around, downwind. Then a two out of eight with a three quarter opposite. Okay, figure six is another, uh, another figure eight. around half snap roll and out now comes number eight which is the tail slide this is going to be a wheels up starts with a two-point roll so we 
we want to see his engine come to our right. Two points of a four point roll on the way down and out to the right. Now four of a two point roll and a double roll opposite. And a pull around. Three of two, and a snap roll, same direction, negative snap. Figure 10 is an S, starts with a half roll, a 5 8 loop. A half roll. And another 5 8 loop. around two out of four opposite four out of eight twelve is pretty similar to ten an S figure pull around and out to the right. Thirteen is a hammerhead. Starts with a one and a quarter roll on the up line. Hammerhead pivot at the top. A roll on the way down and out to away from the judges on the y-axis. Goes right into the P-loop. Half roll, quarter roll opposite. Pull around, snap roll at the top. Two point roll, four point roll opposite. And he's done. Give us a little wag, Craig, and he's out to the south to recover, to runway 35. So subtle differences from the A, uh, and it was uh, fun to see just the, the variation there on um, a positive snap as opposed to negative snap uh, at the top of those P loops. Uh, but nonetheless, that was Craig Gifford flying the, uh, the C unknown uh, for unlimited. Coming up next is uh, Steve uh, Grossmeyer. Flying an MXS, uh, and it's, it's fun to walk around the hangar and look at these airplanes. You'll see little things that the pilots have tweaked on each of their airplanes, and his is probably uh, the most tweaked uh, by the pilot, and just fun to see all the little additions that he's made to the MXS aircraft, uh, but nonetheless an absolutely beautiful uh, blue, red, and silver uh, MXS. So Steve is a uh, retired uh, lieutenant colonel in the U.S. Marine Corps. He uh, flew uh, heavy lift uh, helicopters for many years with the Marines. Um, he then served as an experimental test pilot. He's been, been uh, many years in unlimited aerobatic uh, competition. Uh, he previously flew a aircraft of his own design called the uh, Eigenhawk Solution. Then he uh, later built the MX, which is a kit-built all-composite airplane from uh, from uh, made in Australia. Uh, he has previously qualified for the U.S. team, but um, did not compete internationally. He wasn't uh, able to able to travel, uh, which you know could get you into discussion about the enormous uh, financial and uh, logistical hurdles of uh, being an international competitor to get these uh, airplanes overseas. Uh, just answering some questions from the chat. Uh, I'm Shell Ballard. I'm a, historically a sportsman competitor and currently judge assisting at nationals right now uh, and a physician in the Air Force. And uh, Jeff Granger uh, is joining me here, also Dr. Uh, Jeff Granger. So we got an all MD uh, team here. It's correct. <laughs> we have an all doc team here today. 
um, and uh, an extra pilot in his own right, um, having flown competition. Yes, um, I guess we can revise our, um, our introductions uh, from time to time. Uh, here's Steve uh, in the box doing his uh, warm-up figures. You notice how when he rolls inverted, he pumps that stick, stretching those belts. The, uh, these aircraft uh, generally have a hooker brand harness system uh, made uh, by, uh, in uh, Illinois by the late Jack Hooker's great company. Uh, they make uh, harness systems for aircraft and auto racing and so on. Um, they generally all have uh, shoulder straps, uh, a crotch strap, so-called anti-submarining strap, and two big padded lap belts. And at least one of the lap belts will have a ratchet on it that allows you to crank that down and get it very tight. Because that's the only thing that's holding you in when you're upside down. Uh, it's strenuous enough when you first start flying inverted. These guys just aren't, aren't just flying inverted, they're, they're pushing hard around on some of these figures, experiencing three, four, sometimes five or six g-forces g up against their straps. And uh, it's not unknown for uh, straps to break uh, or even uh, uh, result in a fractured canopy. I know at least one competitor let a strap come loose, cracked his canopy with his helmet. But, so. but certainly stretch. So those, those belts stretch in practically every flight. And oftentimes these pilots, as part of their, their compensation for G-forces, are tightening down those straps to the point where it can be a little bit painful even on the ground. Mm -hmm. But then you get inverted a few times and they stretch out uh, and then they'll usually tighten them again one last time, probably right now actually for Grossmeyer as he's lining up uh, with the uh, aerobatic box. Speaking of, as he's prepping for that, uh, one other question on the chat was just about the size and the dimensions of the aerobatic box. So it is a thousand meters by a thousand meters marked with big white placards on the ground. The bottom of the box is a hundred meters for this category, unlimited, uh, which is the top category and also the lowest uh, low, uh, which is about 328 feet. Mm -hmm. And the top goes up to about uh, 3,500 feet? About Sounds about right, yeah. All right, he's coming in, so I'll get ready to call off these figures for you. Looks like everybody's starting with that same uh, initial figure, the P loop. They pulled a vertical half roll and a two out of eight opposite. Now he's got to push around and do a snap roll at the top. Continue to push around to the horizontal line where he's got a, a one and three quarter and a one and a quarter roll, opposite roll combination and then he's out into the wind. Now he's got a uh, pull to vertical for a Humpty Bump with uh, two out of four on the way up. On the way down, he's got a three out of four. And a pull around and a negative uh, three quarter snap on this next line. And then he's got to lay out uh, inverted to the left. This is the A form, the same one that the first pilot, Jeff Petro, flew. Now he tips down to the diagonal, does a one and a half roll. Then he's got a pull around three quarter loop. On this next diagonal is a two-point roll. Now he's got to push around on a five-eighths loop. Then a one-and-a-half roll, one-and-a-half snap outside, opposite combination. Next is a pull to a Humpty Bump with a quarter roll on the way up, quarter roll on the way down, and out to the right. Figure five is a hammerhead, begins with a one and a quarter roll on the up line. Got a, a roll on the down line, 
simple 360 degree roll and out on the y-axis again heading toward the airfield a pull to vertical a half roll and a quarter roll opposite then a pull around P loop again with a snap roll on top now he's got at the bottom a two point and four point opposite roll combination Figure seven is another Humpty Bump, basically the same as figure four. It's a Humpty Bump with a quarter roll up, quarter roll down. This is mainly, I think, just a turnaround figure. It does bring him back downwind to begin figure eight, which is the tail slide. The tail slide is wheels up. If he went the other way, it would be considered a zero has a two-point roll on the way up. So look for wheels up. Two out of four on the way down and out to the right. Figure nine is the diagonal Humpty, the four-point roll on the way up. Now this is a push around, 180 degree pitch change, half snap roll, and out to our left. Figure 10 is an outside half loop up, begins with a roll and a half roll opposite, push around, then a 2 out of 4 and a 4 out of 8 opposite roll combination. Figure 11 is another double Humpty with a quarter roll up. Nothing on this descending line. Then a half roll up. And this exits on the Y axis, upright. Now a push over to begin a P loop, outside P loop, three quarter roll. And he must push around into the wind. And at the top is a two out of eight opposite three quarter roll combination. Thirteen is a simple half loop down. This is a connector figure to get him opposite direction and upright again before the final figure, figure 14, which is a four out of two and double roll opposite combination. A pull around with a three out of two and a same direction negative snap combination. And he's done. Well, I found that exhausting just to read it. I can't imagine what it's like for him to fly it. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. But well done by Steve Grossmeyer. Uh, yeah, so you'll notice that between this morning's flights and this afternoon's flights, if you've been watching uh, or been with us all day, uh, you'll notice that there's been a, a relative change in the wind, and that wind is determined, or that box entry is determined based on uh, predominant wind along that x-axis of the box. Uh, so they're taking off in the opposite direction now, uh, and they're also uh, flying into the box in the opposite direction they were this morning. Next one up is uh, Jeff Bourbon, spelled B-O-E-R-B-O-O-N, but pronounced just like one of my favorite drinks, <laughs> Bourbon, from uh, Cave Creek, uh, Arizona. Uh, Jeff's flying an extra 330SC as are the majority of the higher level competitors. And I think also flying the A sequence as is uh, most yes. of our, yes. um, as are most of our competitors today. Might make it just a little bit more easier for me. Uh, he flies for a major airline. 
and uh, has been on the U.S. Advanced Team at Pendleton, Oregon in 2008, the U.S. Unlimited Team 2009 in Silverstone, England, uh, the U.S. Unlimited Team in 2010-11, uh, uh, and also in 2015 in Chateau Roux, and uh, he's hoping to qualify for the Unlimited Team again and compete wherever they might hold the contest next year. Do we have a contest location, uh, Lori? Anybody know yet? No. Uh, the contests are sometimes held in the U.S. I, I attended and was a volunteer at the contest in Lakeland, Florida in 2003 and in Sherman Denison, Texas in 2013 and at Chateau Roux, France in 2019. Kind of a international competition junkie, I guess. Nice. Uh, it's a lot easier to attend if they're in the U.S., of course. Uh, the big, uh, one of the biggest issues for these competitors is getting their airplanes overseas. It's pretty hard to rent a uh, aircraft of this capability. Um, most of the time they have to be disassembled and shipped by, by sea or by air and uh, it is enormously complicated and expensive. And uh, these guys are, uh, are amateurs. You might say amateurs, they look pretty professional to me, right? Yeah, agreed, I mean, yeah, but I mean, predominantly an amateur sport. Yeah. So you will see as uh, we get that announcement for where that contest is going to be held uh, and then the team starts advertising uh, their plans. You may see opportunities uh, to donate to the team and such and kind of help in that effort and getting them overseas or getting airplanes uh, rented or transported. Yeah. Um, and certainly those kinds of uh, donations are always welcome. But by amateur, I mean they're lovers of the sport. And Agreed. They don't, Agreed. They, don't get, they don't get government support. Some of the international teams have uh, support from their governments, but here they're, they're self-funded or funded by donations, as you, as you pointed out. Um, Jeff also is an airshow pilot. He flies an amazing and unique airplane called the Yak 110, which was build up of uh, two Yak 55s plus a jet engine, and is uh, one of the most exciting and astonishing airplanes you'll see perform in airshows. Um, unfortunately for us in the U.S., uh, it was recently shipped to Australia hmm. for a five-year term, so it'll be in Australia, New Zealand, and some of the uh, Southeast Asian countries for the next couple of years. But hopefully it'll come back eventually. So he's completed his uh, warm-up figures, and is, uh, I hear the engine winding up, so he's coming around behind us to the left to get ready for box entry from left to right. And he's flying the A-form. Is that correct? Same That's uh, correct. one uh, that we yeah. just saw. Yeah, five uh, out of nine of the competitors uh, flying unlimited at this competition chose the A form today. Mm -hmm. So you'll be seeing a lot of that A sequence. And it looks like not necessarily uh, just because of the uh, the aircraft being flown. So we have extras and MXs both flying mm -hmm. the uh, the A sequence. As you pointed out, they, uh, they have to walk through these sequences on the ground um, to get an idea of which way they're going to roll, especially on the uplines, and how they're going to compensate for the wind. We have a strong wind blowing the aircraft toward the judge's line from east to west today. So it's going to make things difficult for them. All right, where is he? All right, we got wing wags diving into the box. OK, here he comes. Figure one is that push around P loop. It begins with a pull to vertical, a three quarter and a two out of eight opposite roll combination. Then a push around with a snap roll at the top. Continue the push around at the bottom a one and three quarter and a one and a quarter opposite roll combination. Figure two is a Humpty Bump on the upline, a two out of four roll. Then he pull around to a vertical downline. Three points of a four point roll. Pull around onto the Y axis, three quarter negative snap. to lay out to our left, inverted.
Figure three is an eight figure on the diagonal down line, a one and a half roll. Point roll puts him inverted, and he's got to push around now on this next looping figure portion. Next one and a half outside snap roll negative one and a half, and he's done. At least he's upright now. This is a Humpty bump with a quarter roll up and a quarter roll down. Just a single Humpty. Humpty Bump is a figure made up of vertical lines and a 180 degree pitch change at the top. Quarter roll. And out to our right, upwind again for figure five. Figure five is a hammerhead. Has a one and a quarter roll on the up line. For the pivot, the judges are looking for zero airspeed and 180 degree yaw within the wingspan. Coming down, he's got a roll and out on the Y axis, heading away from the judges. Figure six is another P loop on the vertical line. There's a half roll and a quarter roll opposite. Then there's a pull around to the left. Snap roll at the top. At the bottom, there's going to be a two point roll and a four point roll opposite. That was figure six. Figure seven is a double, is a Humpty with a quarter roll up, quarter roll down, pretty much the same as figure four. Gets him turned around again. Okay, figure eight's the tail slide on the downwind side of the box. Begins with a two point roll on the up line. And if you'll remember from last time, this is a wheels up tail slide. Two kinds of tail slides, wheels up or wheels down. If you don't do the correct one, it zeroes the whole figure, no matter how good it is. There he goes. Two out of four on the way down, and out to our right, completing figure eight. Figure nine is a diagonal Humpty with a four-point roll on the first line. And now a push around. Half snap roll back to upright. And out to our left. Figure 10, a roll with a half roll opposite. Push around, half loop up. At the top, a two out of four and a four out of eight opposite. And done. Figure 11 is another double Humpty. Quarter roll on the up line. I think I've lost him in the sun. Okay, nothing on the down line. Half roll on the up line and back onto the Y axis. Now he's going to push down for an outside P loop. Starts with a three quarter roll. At the top, a two out of eight, three quarter roll opposite. He's inverted. 
And so this next figure is just a simple half loop down, reverses direction, and gets him back upright again. Final figure, four out of two rolled, double roll opposite. Pull around at the top, three of two, and a negative snap on the same direction. And done. There's a wing wag signaling the end of that uh, sequence. Well done, Jeff, in calling that one, and well done, other Jeff, in flying <laughs> that one. I think he, he. I think I had the easier job. <laughs> uh, we do have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a chat going, don't we, Lori? And uh, questions available. So uh, feel free to uh, send your questions in for us. So something that I think is worth chatting about is there's some subtle differences between these two aircraft that we're seeing uh, competing at the unlimited level. The uh, Extra 330 SC, which the majority of our competitors is, are flying, uh, is an aircraft with a steel tube fuselage and a composite wing. Extra, uh, until this year, uh, didn't offer an aircraft that was completely composite, uh, other than the NG, which is a two-seat aircraft, but no single-seat aircraft uh, that was completely composite. They just came out with the Extra 330 SX, which I think is going to probably be replacing some of these for some of our pilots in the uh, coming years. Uh, that is completely composite, both fuselage and wing. Is that not accurate, Jeff? No, I think okay. the the extra NG is all composite. Correct, but only but it's a two seat. Uh, a so two I was seat saying, yeah, no single but seat. But the uh, the extra, uh, I think the extra 330SX mm -hmm. is the same uh, general construction as the SC. Oh. It has a steel truss fuselage and a um, composite wing and tail surfaces, uh, but it is. Uh, They've done some some things to it. They've shortened the fuselage somewhat, and uh, they I think may may have changed the plate control surfaces a bit mm. to tweak it a little bit. They're trying to just give another 10% to the the 330 SC. Mm. But you can check that by, probably by going on the uh, Extra website. Extra is a, a has been manufacturing for aircraft for some. 40 years or so, was founded by Walter Extra, a German engineer and aerobatic enthusiast. And is now run by him and his two sons, uh, Marcus and uh, Eriks. It's in uh, Dinslock in Germany. And they've produced uh, close to a thousand aircraft. Doesn't seem like a lot, you know, compared with something like a Beechcraft or a Cessna, but in the aerobatic world, that's an enormous number. Yeah. Uh, and they continue to uh, refine their, uh, their designs. The, uh, the MXS, though, in contrast to the 330SC's construction, is completely composite, nose to tail, uh, other than some titanium gear, uh, and is kind of a descendant uh, or a, a close step cousin, perhaps, to uh, an aircraft from the 90s known as the Giles, yeah. uh, with kind a larger an, engine and a slightly different wing. Yeah, kind of evolved out of that. Agreed. And we do see some Giles uh, aircraft here. Uh, we have a a 200 and a 202. A 202, yeah, I thought we had seen them in intermediate and advanced. Yes. Advanced, yeah. So we're on a, a little bit of a break. Um, uh, it is no doubt very demanding for the pilots, but it's also somewhat demanding for these judges out here. A lot of them uh, are older folks like me, <laughs> retirees, um, and they're sitting in the hot blazing sun here in uh, early fall in the Great Plains and they do need a bathroom break and hydration breaks from time to time. But the uh, next pilot up is going to be uh, Goody Thomas, Goodwin Thomas from Rock Hill, Carolina, South Carolina. And uh, Goody's a uh, long-term competitor. He, he flies for the airlines, but he's been on the Unlimited team since 2007 when they went to Granada, Spain, uh, 2009 in Silverstone, England. Uh, he was on the team in Ch for Chateau Roux, in 2015 and 2019. Uh, he's won numerous gold medals in unlimited category. And uh, I've spent some time with him recently on the judging line. A super, super nice guy. He's been flying since he was age 13. His father and his grandfather both flew in the military. Attended uh, Clemson University. He's in uh, the box now for his uh, warm-up figures. And he is flying the A-form. 
Should I continue to call out these figures as they go for our viewers? Um, I suspect most of them don't have the sequence in front of them or know how to read the arresty figures. Goody, okay. Goody Thomas. Flying an extra 330 SC. In fact, I think this is one of the earlier ones I produced, and he's uh, kept it, and maintained it for these for many years. He's coming around behind us, uh, getting ready to set up for box entry from left to right. We still got a pretty strong wind out of the east. Uh, there is a nominal wind direction for the judges, uh, the nominal wind direction, which determines you know whether they fly from left to right or right to left is from the judge's right, but actually the majority of the wind is from the east, which really complicates the uh, pilot's uh, placement because they have to avoid flying over the top of the judges. You can't really judge these figures very well if they're right over the top of your head. So Goody's coming around to the left. All these, uh, we're out at the video booth, just to the left of the judges' station. The main reason for the, the, these flights are videoed is so that the judges can have a video review if they need to. As you've seen, these figures have a lot of complicated rotations. And even with four or five, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six judging stations, it's possible that somebody could, could miss a critical feature, and so the Flights are all recorded. If a uh, competitor were to question or protest a score, we could always uh, review the video and determine whether they hit those points or not. So I hear him coming up to the left. He's probably making a last minute, last moment. But review. also really exciting, Jeff, to be able to share this with those at home uh, through technology, being yes. able to, to watch the competition from home. I know if I weren't here, I'd be sitting at home watching this right now. All right, here he comes. First figure, P loop, hold a vertical, three quarter, two out of eight opposite. Gonna push around and a snap roll at the top. At the bottom, one and three quarter, one and a quarter opposite. Figure two is a double Humpty. It's got a two out of four roll on the upline. This is a full pull double Humpty, pulling around the top. And on the way down, he's gonna do three of four. One, two, three, puts him on the Y axis, pull around. On this last line, a negative three quarter snap and then out inverted to our left. Now a fig an eight figure. It starts with a diagonal line and a one and a quarter roll. Correction, one and a half roll. There's a positive three quarter loop. diagonal, a two-point roll. Now, inverted, he must push around on a 5 8 lead. At the top, a one-and-a-half roll and a negative one-and-a-half snap opposite. And he's upright again. I'll bet that's a relief. Now a, a Humpty with a quarter roll up, quarter roll down. And these uh, rolls should be centered on the, on the line, something the judges are looking for. So it wasn't complicated enough already. Quarter roll and out to our right, finishing figure four. Figure five is a hammerhead. On the up line, a one and a quarter roll. Okay, the hammer.
hammer head pivot is 180 degree yaw. We don't want to see any torque. Hit pivot within your wingspan. On the way down, a roll. And he'll continue out on the Y axis. She'll immediately pull to the P loop, do a, a half roll and a one quarter opposite, and then a pull around with a snap roll at the top of the loop. Continue the loop all the way around, and at the bottom, a two point roll with a four point roll opposite. And that finishes figure six. F figure seven is the Humpty Bump with quarter roll up, quarter roll down.